I'm Jonathan Boston, Professor of Public Policy in the School of Government at Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, I've been involved in tertiary education policy issues over much of my uh, academic life. Uh, with respect to the Performance Based Research Fund, I became involved in funding issues in the 1990s, um, particularly in relation to the funding of research. Uh, and there were many debates, uh, particularly in the late 1990s, about how we might alter the funding system to facilitate a greater focus on research and help improve New Zealand's overall research performance. Uh, in the year 2000, the then Labour government established uh, the Tertiary Education Advisory Commission. and I was a member of that commission and gave a lot of attention to research funding issues. We established as part of that commission uh, a research subcommittee um, which I helped lead uh, and that came up with the idea of a performance-based research fund. Now the logic for such a fund was broadly as follows. The first consideration was uh, simply, if you like, tactical. The, the Labour-led government had made it very clear to the TEC that it would not countenance any significant additional investment in tertiary education unless it could be assured that that uh, investment generated better results. So we needed to come up with some mechanism that was performance oriented in order to demonstrate that the additional funding was being well used. Uh, for very good reasons we rejected the idea of <coughs> having a performance based tuition uh, funding system uh, uh, in which um, funding would be strongly related to uh, student performance. Um, but we did uh, recognise the potential merits of having some kind of uh, performance-based system for funding research. Uh, that led to really quite serious investigations of the various international options that were then <coughs> in play. And uh, as a result of that, we proposed what we thought would be uh, a relatively simple scheme for uh, funding uh, research using uh, certain performance oriented criteria. What we proposed back then in 2001 was a scheme which uh, had three elements, um, uh, 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 an evaluation which focused on a limited number of research outputs of uh, eligible academic staff, uh, and then two um, indicators, uh, one based on research degree completions and the other based on external research income. The, the, the government broadly accepted our advice and established um, a, a working group to put flesh on the bone. This was during two, the year 2002 and I was appointed as an advisor to that working group. Uh, during the course of that working group, the then PBRF became far more complicated <laughs> Uh, in, in nature. Uh, and then when that working group completed its task and the Tertiary Education Commission took on the task of implementing the PBRF, it became even more complicated. So what was originally uh, seen as a, as a relatively simple scheme, uh, which used individuals as a unit of assessment, but in a context where uh, this would be purely for funding purposes and where individuals would not uh, receive information about how their particular research outputs have been rated and so forth. We moved to a much more convoluted um, uh, regime uh, which involved uh, in the end uh, the publication of very detailed information about performance at uh, the institutional level, the uh, disciplinary level, the unit within institutions and so forth, and uh, a situation where individuals were provided with <coughs> data on their own uh, performance. Um, I have to be honest, that was not part of the original intent. And to some extent, the original intent was perhaps misconceived because we hadn't really taken into account fully the implications of the Privacy Act and the Official Information Act. Um, there's a good lesson there in terms of uh, policy design and implementation not always going hand in hand. Um, so we ended up with, uh, with a scheme that was implemented <coughs> um, 
which involves uh, a periodic quali quality evaluation uh, and the use of two indicators. And although there have been some changes to the, to the weighting of the different components of the scheme, basically what was proposed by the working group, albeit with some significant additional um, flesh to the bone, uh, basically what was rec recommended has, been, has now been implemented uh, over the last 15 years or so. The PBRF, in my view, has had some positive consequences in terms of uh, improving research performance, as was intended. It has generated a little bit more money for the tertiary sector, possibly more than might otherwise have uh, been allocated. We can't be sure of that. Uh, but it has also had some downside consequences. The scheme we have in place now in this country uh, involves a very significant investment of time and effort. Uh, on the part of, um, of academic staff within institutions, uh, along with, of course, a, a very significant amount of work by the Tertiary Education Commission and, and those who are appointed to peer review panels. Um, in, in, in my view, uh, it is desirable, uh, as the government has announced, that we should have a proper and thoroughgoing and independent review uh, of the PBRF. Um, and in, in that regard, um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can think laterally and, and think about other possible ways in which we might um, uh, assess performance and do so in ways that perhaps are less um, intrusive, less stressful for staff, with lower transaction costs, uh, but without any significant reduction in kind of uh, the incentives to, to uh, generate good performance. It may be we can't come up with anything uh, that's going to be a, a substantive improvement, but I think we should at least have a go. One thing I believe very strongly is that there is no need to have a quality evaluation uh, as regularly as we do. So e even if we keep the, the kind of peer review uh, assessment process that we have in place at the moment um, in, a, in an EU scheme, my view is that that should be run on, on a much less frequent basis. I would think something like uh, every 10, possibly every 12 years would be, would be perfectly adequate, particularly if you kept uh, the, the two indicators in place, which would provide ongoing incentives for performance in relation to research degree completions and, and the attraction of external research income. Why do I think the um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> periodicity of the quality evaluation should be extended? Well, first, I, I really don't think that uh, imposing that kind of pretty intensive as assessment every six years is necessary. Um, staff have many other reasons to perform from a research point of view. There is the regular uh, um, uh, review of, of, of staff performance in the sense of um, staff applying for promotion and just, just ongoing normal processes within uh, a tertiary context. There is also, of course, simply the professional um, ethos, the desire to do well, to perform well, to make a contribution to society, to do top quality research. Those incentives uh, are going to remain regardless of whether we have uh, a PBRF or, or something like it. Um, another consideration here is that uh, the these reviews are, are expensive to run. They absorb a lot of time and a lot of effort, including a lot of time and effort on the part of some of our very best researchers. If we were to extend the review period, uh, it would then uh, reduce the overhead per dollar of funds allocated through the quality evaluation process. And, and I think that would be a good thing. In addition, uh, extending the periodicity of the uh, review process would, I think, take some of the pressure off staff who I think at the moment often feel they're on a treadmill. They no longer complete, uh, they, they've, no long, they've no sooner, I should say, completed uh, filling out an evidence portfolio that they have to turn their attention to their next evidence portfolio and, and think uh, you know, pretty quickly about the kinds of research outputs that they're going to be able to produce within the next X years in order to uh, meet the requirements of that next um, uh, evidence portfolio, and I, I think personally, as a as a user of the system, as someone who's uh, suffered the consequences of it as well as helped implement it I, and designed it, I, I, I think uh, it would be desirable uh, to to take some of that treadmill effect out of the system. It would also, additionally, uh, enable uh, universities and other tertiary institutions to be more flexible 
in their recruitment uh, of staff, particularly new and emerging researchers, and indeed uh, in their use of, of, of um, people from um, uh, sort of non-traditional areas of uh, research activity. In my own school, for example, School of Government, uh, it would be highly desirable for us to be able to have um, more practitioners involved in uh, the teaching program. But to do so is extremely difficult in the context of, of a PBRF process, particularly one which has such regular quality evaluations. So um, that's just one element in the overall equation which I think uh, needs, needs consideration. There are, there, are, there are many others and I trust that uh, over the course of the next year or two, uh, as we undertake this um, uh, proper review of the PBRF, we will be able to explore a range of options and consider their strengths and weaknesses. So I wish you well for this event uh, and uh, thanks for this opportunity to contribute.